All right, hello everyone. This is uh, Ron Hicks, radio talk show host with Freedom Miles of Radio. And today, what I'm going to do for a, uh, I'm going to do a tutorial with ZBrush, which, if you uh, inter interested in the graphic arts in, to any degree, uh, I encourage you to uh, go out and check out check it out at www.pixelogic.com. That's p i x o l o g i c dot com. So what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to show you how to uh, do a simple uh, cereal bowl or a bowl of uh, whatever you want to call it. So to start with, we have our uh, ZBrush opened here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the Sapphire uh, 3D to get things started off. And we drop that to the palette. We go up here to edit, which is uh, shortcut key is a T. And as you see, we've got our Sphere 3D here. And what I like to do is I open up the floor so you can see how this thing is oriented. Now, uh, it's my particular uh, preference to have things oriented on the uh, X axis, on the Y axis standing up. So, uh, first off, uh, once we got our Sphere 3D on the uh, canvas there, we want to convert it to a poly mesh. And you go up here and you click on the uh, poly, make poly mesh, make poly mesh 3D. Alright, so now we've got it converted to a poly mesh and we want to look at the poly frames. Now what I want to do here is I want to rotate this. As you can see, it's pointing uh, pointing toward the Z axis. I want to get the top axis pointed toward the Y. It's just a, a preference I have. So we go up to uh, rotate and we get this little 3D tool here. Now, what we want to do is we want to get this thing oriented toward the uh, up, pointing up on the y-axis. Y so we move it back like that, and uh, we go, we drag our uh, tool to the middle, and then we go back and we go to the side. Now, when I go on this and hit the rotate, it should rotate the uh, folds of the sphere up and down the y-axis. So there we go. We hold down the shift key to, to make it snap. Now you see we have the uh, have our sphere sitting on, sitting on the plane and with the uh, north and south poles oriented toward the y-axis. Which is just something I like. It's <laughs> just the way I like to work. So we go back to draw here and we hold down the shift control key. What we're going to do is isolate a group of the uh, poly mesh and we want to go about halfway. Or maybe a little less than halfway. Now that's going to hide the top. So you can see, uh, we have to go down to the display property so we can see the inside of this thing as well. And so now you can see we just have a hollow shell there. Alright, we got that established. And we got our, uh, our y axis pointing up, which is something I like. So it's a poly mesh, and we've got part of it hidden. Now if you go into the geometry, You'll find a command here, which is uh, you want to delete the hidden part. So the hidden part we can't see. We're going to delete it. Okay. Now we need to add some thickness to this shell here to make it more like a bowl. So what we do there is we go down to this tool called the morph target, and we store the present uh, state of the morph target. We have store them MT. Now what we want to do is we want to go to deformation. And we want to expand this thing so it has a rim inside of it, kind of making it more of a 3D object. So we're going to inflate it a little bit under the, defam uh, under the uh, deformation palette. So uh, once we've done that, now we go back down to the morph, and we create a difference uh, mesh. So now we've created our difference mesh, and you'll see it's already been named morphdiff.pm3d. And you see we have some thickness on this thing. So now we've established the uh, primitive requirements for our mesh here. Now, to make this bowl sit on our uh, floor or our table uh, much easier, or to make it a little bit more realistic, we want to flatten. And as you can see, we have the y axis pointing up. So we want to flatten along the y axis. So we go down to the uh, deformation. Uh, palette 
and we have the flatten command and we want to change this just to Y and then we uh, there we go okay so from the bottom there now we got our bowl is uh, the bottom is flattened as you can see it's flattened there okay we've gotten a good start here so we're going to turn off the polyframe it's still a little rough and it needs some additional geometry so we've pretty much established the uh, shape of our bowl here and uh, what we're going to do before we divide it though we're going to go back to the polyframe momentarily and I want to show you something called polygroups <coughs> now uh, we go down to the poly let's see polygroups okay what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to paint a stripe around the edge of the bowl but before we get to that I want to isolate the ice outside of the bowl so if you hit down if you hit uh, shift and control simultaneously and move your cursor over that that should be the uh, outside of a bowl but so we can aid us in our uh, differentiation of what's what here we go to the poly groups and we say we're going to group to visible so we do that now now when we look at our bowl we can see that the pink part is the inside all right now what we want to do is hold down the shift control key uh, once again but before we do this we're going to eliminate the polyframe for a minute we're going to give this thing a little bit more geometry we're going to uh, give it a lot finer mesh here so what we do there we're going to go up to uh, we're going to collapse our deformation palette collapse our polygroup palette kind of neaten things up here a bit and we're going to go to geometry and what this is going to do is going to divide it and give us much finer geometry so I just hit the divide button here and we'll divide it I uh, say we'll divide it down to four levels that's going to give us a nice smooth appearance on the bowl there now when we go back to our polyframe you can see we've got a much uh, denser mesh here but as I was saying before we want to put a stripe around this bowl but we don't want the stripe to be on the inside that's going to be the trick so what we're going to do we're going to hide the polyframe again and we're going to change the material attributes of this bowl and we don't need the add temporarily we're just going to go to the material RGB button and we're going to find a material here now my favorite since we're kind of, uh, kind of uh, imitating a ceramic bowl is we're going to go down to our toy plastic it's one of my favorite materials so now you got this shiny appearing bowl and that's what we're going to start with okay so we got a material set and we go to the color menu up here we're going to say fill that object so as you can see up here in the tools the object has been filled okay so now we're going to back back to the polyframe and look at our polyframe again and as before you can see the pink or the uh, purplish is the inside of our bowl and we want to place a stripe on the exterior surface of the bowl and not the interior so we're going to uh, hide the interior but we're going to do that by pressing the shift control and clicking on the outside of the bowl now we can see the uh, inside is hidden Okay, so now we have that established, we're going to turn off our polyframe. And what we're going to do, we're going to do some masking here. So we're going to go over here to the masking palette. And we're going to uh, you hit control. But just to make sure we get the correct uh, type of masking, we're going to do these, the, uh, <coughs> let's see, where is it? A rectangular mask. I believe it is the... Uh, okay mask rectangular we hit OK so now this will ensure that we'll get a rectangular mask so we press the control key to control key down and you can see the uh, brushes turn yellow and it indicates a mask so we're going to put this red stripe eh, about middle ways now we want the red stripe in the middle so we want to invert our mask so we're going to inverse it now that middle portion is unmasked and we're going to stay with the same type of material, our toy plastic, but we're going to go to, let's go to a kind of a uh, food type color, a warm color. We're going to try this, uh, this kind of this orange here. 
And so we're going to go up and we're going to say uh, fill out. Okay, now we got a nice orange stripe on a hole. It's on, only on the outside, now we'll see. So we're going to turn off our mask. We're going to clear it. Ah, so there we got a nice, uh, nice smooth orange stripe. And we can't, we can, we still have our interior of the bowl hidden. So then we're going to hit shift control key outside the object. And voila! There's the interior of the bowl. It is not uh, colored like the rest. Okay, so we've, uh, we've come a long way here. So what we're going to do next is hit shift key. We're going to, no, we're going to hit the alt key. We're going to move our object around and just kind of look at it there. Take a look at what we got. And we're going to turn off the floor. Now we can't see our floor. Now we're going to add some perspective to this. And you can go to the perspective. So now we got a perspective. So now we want to uh, kind of add a little interesting view here. And we're going to our Alt key. And uh, kind of enlarge, kind of let it fill up the uh, canvas there. Now, one of the other features in uh, ZBrush recently, this is uh, 4R3, and uh, they've introduced this, uh, this um, feature called light caps. So we're going to play with the lighting a little bit here. We've got one light on there. So we're going to turn on another light. And let's say, let's make this light, uh, and let's make it light green color. Oh, that's okay. Our other light, okay. Our first light, we're gonna have that white. Second light's green. Okay. So you can see it's uh, it's it's from the bottom. So you can uh, turn it up on the globe here. We want to get a little bit of it in the interior. Ah, that's more like it. Well, anyway, I could go into light caps, but what I want to go do is go ahead and render this and uh, kind of finish up the uh, tutorial here. Uh, we can maybe get into light caps another time. I haven't totally explored it, but it is interesting. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and render our object here. And as always, I encourage you, if you haven't, if you don't know anything about ZBrush, go to Pixelogic.com uh, and find out more about it. I bought my version back in 2002, and I've been getting free upgrades for the last uh, nine years. And I just can't say enough about it. Uh, they're a company, you can call them on the phone, as long as you're registered and you pay for it. They'll do all you can to help you restore it if you've lost it or you've uh, reformatted your computer. So definitely check out uh, Pixelogic.com. It's it's uh, it's a well well, well worth uh, tool to have in your tool belt of uh, graphic tools. But anyway, back to the render. We're going to look at the render properties a little bit, and we got uh, we want the something I always like is I put these soft the uh, soft RGB and the soft Z. Sometimes you use depth cube, depth cube, but not all the time. But just for demonstration purposes, uh, we're going to go ahead and render this out. And I'm going to wrap up this tutorial. But I'll show you what the uh, finished product looks like. And we go up to uh, Best. And it starts to render it. And there you go. We have a completed uh, Zebra cereal bowl. And so uh, thanks so much for... Uh, watching the YouTube video and uh, I'll be doing some future uh, tutorials on ZBrush. In the meantime, make sure you check out uh, Pixelogic.com. It's a really good tool to have in your graphics tool belt. So anyway, that's all for now and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.